boom, 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 boom. Your ass check that nine millimeter into the substation. You saw this doctor's car, man. Huh. You saw. I promote peace and unity among Chris because we are first. We are our first. A brother from the neighborhood, rolling 20s, called me the next morning. That's how I found out about somebody from 60 got killed. Called me. You say, no, man, I'm trying to do this thing, man. In my neighborhood, then got into some funk, man, with the 60s. And I'm like, damn, Skip. He said, but that wasn't my homies that did that. Yeah, who was it? Come on, cause I, I see the nigga doing it live on camera. Yeah. On camera, you know? So I'm trying to figure out, okay, what happened? Did, did the homies from the city walk up and say, what's up, cuz? Or whoop, whoop, whoop. You know, homie, you out of bounds. You know, you got this red hat on, you out of bounds. You know, you need to get on out of here. And the nigga took it upon himself and said, you know what? Fuck it, that's how Bam and YC got killed. You know? Big young crew? Uh, uh, Lil YC got killed. Lee? Lee Glover? One was my dog. Damn. 91 was like the dark yeah, standard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Funky ass Hoover's killed him. You know? But it went from just talking to him, like, hey, homie, y'all, you know, you know where you at? Yeah, nigga, we know where we at. Well, homie, show us a little respect. Show you some respect, though, all right. Boom, 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 boom. Now watch him. What the fuck is you doing? Brushing in with your head down because nobody taught him how to fight. See, we teach them. We teach them. We got a Thunderdome over there. When you come on the Raymond, you're going up in the Thunderdome, nigga. You might be up in the Thunderdome for a week until you get a win. But you better know. You know how to fight now. You ain't got to run first result is not going to grab a gun because if it's a one-on-one -on -one thing you better try to whoop his ass you know you got to 69 early 70s Raymond Hustle my cousin Marcus Play Spark right. he is what I consider the founder of the Raymonds Spark and Lavelle some of us was West Side Crips some of us was underground some of us were UGs. And then everybody just said, you know what? I live over on this side. Let's click up and do our thing on this side. City got together, done their thing. Babyface, Baby Huey, and their brother Rick. Rick, you know Rick? Rick. Rick. It, not Big Rick. Rick. That's facing them oldest brother. Skinny, dark skinny Rick. They used to live right down this street over here. They was with their mom. They had a house over here. When the Ray, uh, uh, Lady Sunshine, the Voice, that was baby facing their first cousin, the Voice. If you can give Raymond's five founders, could you name them? Al, Marcus Player, Vale Player. Uh, Wayne Harris, uh, Craig Ross, uh, Spark, uh, Screw, Pops, Spark, and the Vince, they doing life. They've been in prison over 24 years. Sparks, Mike, I'm 48. Yeah, Spark is 50. The Veil, probably 52. Craig is like, 40 something. Steve is like 40, 44. Tell us about Inglewood, the beginnings. 10 dues. Actually, in the, before I caught my case in YA, went to YA, I used to live right there. House right there. You see the big house right there? I was at war with these blood dudes out here, Jan Boer and everybody. Carrie Hayes. Down 
That was my cousin house. That was big jam. My house is black too. 3926? No, not the portable. Hello? Hello? Hey. What? And, and I'm gonna be on. I'm perfect. I'm over here. My mom buying the house. She's living over there. My dad was staying here. My stepfather was staying here. My mom was in the house. So I used to want to come over here because the police used to be on my ass over there. So Inglewood police had white cars back then. And you go to jail, you went to the fire department. See, they didn't even have a police station yet. Go to the fire department. And uh, what I did, before I went to Y and caught my murder, it was about, see this apartment right here? It's called 3850. It's probably like 13 little dudes out there. I used to come over here and kick it with, do all this old stuff, and they used to go, woo, woo, blood. Man, the blood just came over here and told me we gotta turn blood. I said, what? Oh, oh, oh. So I said, what y'all gonna do? Oh, no, nah, man. We 102nd Street, man. We gonna be 102nd Street Crips. We got to be rankings. Because if you just 102nd Street Crips, they just gonna come over here and take over y'all. They like, I ain't nobody gonna bust on us and do all this. Me and my cousin Jane. And in his backyard, got his mama's Grand Prix. We got 222 rifles. Roll down the street, came through the back of this apartment, and just start busting in the air, pop, 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 with red rags on my face. Fuck y'all. 20 minutes later, we come pulling back up. We was young, trying to get that car back in there for his mama found to. And them they, they just bust on us. Who bust on you? The family. Y'all niggas join, nigga, let's do this. Let's do it, kill old boy. Of Take them all with me. I gotta use a scapegoat. I got to, to, to empower myself. Bah, bah. That's thing I know. I get caught. Why? Come home. 1980, November 20th. I got right here. Like 55 games. All playing at 10 Deuce Rain. 10 Deuce Rain in 1980. What year was that you? Seventies, early seventies. Then I get right here. I stayed in YA. So they started in the seventies. Yeah, we started. The foundation started. The structure started. When I came home in 1980. The foundation was laid, and we was ready. Because I went to a meeting out of this backyard. We're actually over at Catholic school. We had a meeting that day. I got out on the third. That Friday, we broke with Bob Ketchum Sporting Good and Big Five. And we had as many as guns as the LAPD or the Eagle Police had. We had them all back here. We were doing our thing. What was, what was the racial makeup here? You see, it's all a lot black. of Mexicans. All, all, black. Was back all black. It's all black. What, what, the, what those Spaniards over here? Well, Lil Rat from 18th Street. His mama and him used to live in this house. He used to come over, he the one started the Myrtles. See, they are a subdivision of the AT Street. Because he started Rat, Mouse, and all them little SA. Because he was the only one that lived, when they moved over here in the 80s. Then by, 80, by 84, you start seeing an influction of Spanish. We didn't have no problem with them, because at that time, we were too busy fighting Crenshaw Mouse. Inglewood family was trying to make them Inglewood family. Because Jan, because Sinbad and them feared what I was doing, because the Myrtles was on that side. The Myrtle Street gangsters. No. This area you rank. Brought the Myrtles on. Back over here, farther down Dolly. Dolly Avenue first. What the center park was, is it? No, you turn and rain. Anything in this general vicinity, do some rain. And I was the bottom line. And by the 80s, by 
By 81, we was at full fledged war. In the early 80s, yes, they came out in the early 80s. Not no 70s. They might have started while I was trying to build a foundation. But in the 80s, the early 80s, the early 80s like 1980, I got out. Remember, I got out in November. Of hey, almost 90, 81. So they was the homies was like drive in was still there. They was like nugget. Drive in where? They used to sit the drive in right yeah. there. That was the century yeah. drive in. Well, all that shopping complex and stuff here, that was the century drive in. It was a doctor's office, a car wash, century driveway, a big field. We used to go through the gate. During the movies. Five or six of them. And go through their alleys, catch them shooting like pop, 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 pop. I'm telling you, I in my book I got a chapter called Cub Scouts to Chris. Because that's what we were. Everybody was a Cub Scout. Everybody, you know you wanted to be a Cub Scout. Everybody wanted to be a Cub Scout when we were little. Mama shit, I wanna be a Cub Scout. I taught them how to put on the, the hard hat and the vests. You know, showing them. You know, how to go with your backpack on, looking like a straight square with your clothes all the way up with some Geronimo socks on, a uh, little shirt so people look at you and be like, oh, that dude ain't nobody, you know, he ain't nobody. Because you know, the first thing y'all do when y'all see somebody walking on the street, you like, who is that? But if you see somebody with a brother with a hard hat on, a vest, a lunch pail, some work boots on, what do you, what, what do you expect? I said, that dude just got off work. Hey, how y'all doing? I'm gonna walk right past you and I'm gonna pop my shit and I'm gonna give it to you. Cause I got you. Do you know? Neck bone. They all they all right down there. That's all tongue crypt. What, uh, what year did they start? Like 86. 86. When Neck Bone got home from folks. His brothers. Big no good, he was from Rain. But he felt more compelled to go with his ethnic group, you know. I want, you know, my ethnic group, and he started the tunnels. And he got, still got a long stand. When bartender got killed by my boy from Nutty Block, we was up both in Y.H. at the same time on murders. You know, he shot bartender right in the middle. Back of the then, we was getting, they wasn't giving you life. They was sending you to prescribed by law because we were juvenile, 22 years. Then you go to the board and the board tell you, you got to do 75 months. Oh, okay. And we was coming back home. Motor Miles, me, Motor Miles. You know who Motor Miles is? Ascari. We all was in Camp Fenner back in 72, 73. We was in camp together. We was just Crips. We didn't have no beef with each other and Crips embrace Crips when you came in. No matter if you was Hoover or whatever, you got to embrace. That's the way the streets was in the early 70s. Like I said, by 85, it's over with. Nobody recognized each other as Crips, as homies. We, we our own gang. I'm trying to work on our peace treaty with the main streets. I got to bring that because that's a neighborhood that my neighborhood has been friends with for over 30 years. And while we was out here warring, main street was chilling and kicking it. Coming to our hood, Big Louie, all of them, Bear, all of them, Del Dog, Ice Mike, all of them. You know, we was all kicking it. We was showing them how to commit 30 millions. Nigga, that's how you do it. Just pull that bitch drawers down and just get it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just get it and we'll send our ass on. You know, like Sleep Rock. That's why I keep trying to tell y'all, man. Tell Sleep Rock, call me. I gave y'all my numbers. Call me. I be wanting to go up to Charlie's. He ain't there no more. But I might get up there and start checking all off my damn money. Motherfuckers want to be killers. Don't want to stand up for that music. When it comes back. Killing for no reason. You know, we had no beef. None. We had fist fights with y'all. But everybody don't realize the Hoover started hating us because of our alliance with the 60s. When all that shit started in the 80s, y'all and them. Who did they see together all the time? 
what, 60s over here? It was Raymond's on Brian Hurst. Eight damn, eleven damn, you know. The Raymond Hoover beef is the eighties, or the seventies beef? It's a seventies beef, but it was no like, I was going to Henry Clay, man, in the seventies, man. And we had fist fights. Because they thought they were stronger than us. But you don't have no chunkles. See, we got a few niggas that's chunking them. It's 13, 12 years old. We chunk them. So back then, the 11 Deuces went to Henry Clay? Yeah, they went to Henry Clay. Everybody went to Henry Clay. 107s, some have 107s, went to Henry Clay. The others went to Bret Hart. See, and our thing was, once we start fighting with them after school, we start meeting them at the, at the bridge. We'll come up on the tips on the edge. And come up there on the western side. If we don't catch them on the west side, we just run all the way down the tracks and catch them on the normally side because they got to go this way. And we surprised Sherman Whack, Maniac, Jughead, all these, Big Cobra, all these dudes, Snot Rag, all these dudes. Yeah, all these dudes, we used to fight them, man. You know, I used to, my thing was, the, me and Termite, we was the same age. Me, Termite, Dural Ransom. Dural Ransom came to Henry Clay for one week. He was in my PE class. And he was talking crazy to my homeboy, Lil Rick. And I, I was 13, and I kicked Sam in his fucking kidneys. I don't pair a blue ass NBA. <clears throat> Papa, me and Daryl always had a problem, even in YA. Who spilled blood first, the Ramings or the Hoover? Between our war, they did. They did. They did. They killed Twilight in 82. Killed Twilight. On, because they couldn't. They just wanted to do it. Caught him slipping over there. Or they came they caught him on riding on the bicycle on 117th in Burundo. And pulled up, shot him in the back with the gauge. And they thought we didn't know it was him. But we knew it was him. And it went down. So that's the first. That was the first blood loss. And then it was. First Crip beef? I, that was our very first Crip beef. First Crip beef. Our second Crip beef. Payback Crips, which started over Big Lefty and Traw, rest in peace, and my little homeboy Bardog, rest in peace. Lefty told him, nigga, this is Payback Park. They were like, nigga, this is Raymond's Park. And he was like, no, homie, this used to be the Payback's Park. Because most of us that grew up in that community in the, in the 60s, in the, in the beginning of the 70s, was either a Payback, a West Side Crip, or our underground see people don't know the UG was one of the biggest motherfucking yeah. gangs in LA. It went all the way from all the way, all the way. It was the underground crypt, man. Yeah. All that block and all that the 07 blocks, well, Sugar Bear. The 07 blocks was 07. But everybody was underground crypt. Either you was a UG, that's what you was, an underground crypt. Karate Man, Kato, all these dudes, Vincent Cleveland, all these dudes, man, was they thing. And then everybody started breaking off. What year did the payback beef start? 80, about 85, That's pretty late, no? Yeah, that was a late war. What about it, the shotguns? When did that we, kick in? We ain't got no beef with the shotguns. But that's just what I'm keep. Yeah, keep, they keep. just is giving the payback, I guess. So. Yeah, and then they always talk about we need to yeah. sit down, you know, come to the table and discuss this. Well, they, beef. You know, they wall bang, Raymond and all that old. Yeah, but see, you got to remember this. Every kid that's growing up right now in the past 15 years don't know what is going on. So there's what? no death between Raymond and, and shotguns? No. 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 No that's death. See, payback. they got a problem no, with y'all. No, they got a problem with the 60s because they killed Nut. Uh, Batnam killed the uh, the boy on the bus stop. Big Nut. Yeah, Nut. They killed Nut at the bus stop with the bat. You know, and people don't realize who all them dudes just did it out of fear. See, everybody out here gang banging right now, doing all this killing, and they killing in American society think, oh, they killing over revenge over the colors. It's not revenge. It's the reckoning, man. It's the reckoning that me and cousin go over here and knock y'all asses down and come back over here and go, niggas, did you just get, niggas, did you see how that nigga was doing like this? 
So it's a, it's like a high, man. It's like a straight high. It's the reckoning, man. It ain't nothing else, man. You know, like I told them, it's like 60. They used to always go like that. And I used to go, the shotguns want to be so much like y'all. So they going like this. But they don't want to just open their fingers out for the end. What year you get the shotguns? They original set too. They original they're set. They original crib set out here. Man, mm. Smooch, Buddha and all them. Everybody just getting along, man. Rose Clan skating ring, every crip in LA used to be there. Back in the 70s, when one person died, one individual died out here in the street, we couldn't turn back. Y'all couldn't turn back after when he killed somebody. There ain't no way. Ain't everybody gonna look at the 60s though. I'm gonna let them look before they kill one of their homies, don't do nothing. So the trend just kept going and going and going and going and going. And going. And now, in the past 20 years, these little boys is growing up. Some of them, like I used to love with Snoop Dogg. Well, I'm going to put it back. Petey Wack and Snoop Dogg. Jay Stone. Lil No Good. When a, when a nigga came from the rolling 60s in 4800, you on drugs, you got your ass whooped. Um, you got that ass whooped. I watched them take homies from the 60s, tie them up, pull their shower, they, they, they jumpsuits off, and took them old white county jail shoes, the hard plastic, and whoop niggas. So other gangs start adopting that in the crib mob. Don't allow no homies to come in here and smoke out. Because this is, this basically is a battleground. 4,800. It's like I told everybody, you know, I'm writing my book, Kev, and I'm contradicting what Monster said about 4,800, how they was just mashing the 60s. No, tell the truth. <laughs> tell the truth, Monster. When you motherfuckers was 25 deep and four 60s in there, you was challenging. As soon as they pulled that fucking raid over there on Brian Hurst and the Avenue and that whole two showers, it's rolling 60s. You motherfuckers like this. Them all 60s? Them all 60s. Yeah, them all, them all 60s up in there.